Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Simply G Radio Show on the Simply G Media Network. I'm the co-host of the show, Neil Haley, the Total Tutor. You can go to my website, TotalTutor.net, for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley, and also Instagram, Total Tutor. And now I want to bring on the founder of the Simply G Radio Show, G.J. Reynolds. G.J., how are you? And I know you're really, really excited. I always say this when I introduce you about our guests, and I think you're really Really excited because he bleeds the same colors you bleed. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, I just left the gym with a hard workout, and and uh, I, I was excited through this whole workout. Uh, who we're going to interview, and and uh, you know we both uh, bleed purple and gold, which is obviously the LSU Tigers, and uh, we're both about the same age, and so you know I followed his career, you know through LSU and all the way into the pros, and. I'm gonna let you do the intro so you get all the, get all the accolades <laughs> right. But he, but but he's uh, he's been a he's been a great role model on the field and he's been a great role model off the field and and he's a standout guy. So I'll let you turn it over and, and introduce the uh, and give him. All the accolades. Absolutely. Again, he uh, played at LSU, then uh, played for the New York Giants for many years, uh, was a three-time Pro Bowl or two-time Super Bowl champion. Uh, Leonard Marshall. Leonard, thanks for calling, and we're excited to talk to you about life after football because, as you know, with a lot of uh, the athletes that you're friends with and things like that, it's a tough transition after your career is over. Yeah, the transition is very tough, guys. I mean, when you play pro football for as long as I did, and and worked in the National Football League for as long as I did, both building a name, a reputation, uh, an image, and a brand. Uh, it's very difficult to transition if you don't have a transition plan. And one of the things I did when I was playing pro football was I went back to school at Fairleigh Dickinson in uh, Hackenside, Teaneck, New Jersey. And uh, I wanted to finish my bachelor's degree and then uh, try to work on my master's degree either at Fairleigh or somewhere else. It just so happened that in 1991, after I finished my bachelor's, I started looking at some options. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to think about and, and do was go back to law school, and in particular, Seton Hall University, because of Seton Hall's reputation in New Jersey and the network that it could provide me, uh, being a Catholic institution. And uh, although I didn't go back right away, I didn't start going back to school until around 2004 and worked on my certification and began the process of my MBA. I think that's when life began to change for Leonard, and uh, I began to shape my life after football. Interesting that, again, G.J., kind of a story just like we talked to another athlete a couple days ago, G.J., that basically what happens is they uh, they have to kind of reflect after their career is over. They can't just jump into a career. They have to kind of think about and ponder. And, gee, you talk about this all the time, that you don't just make a decision, a rash decision. You have to really uh, – experience things and understand things more before making that decision, right, G.J.? Correct, and, and Leonard used a great word, a transition plan. And anytime there's a transition plan, you, you obviously have to do some due diligence, you've got to do some reflection, and then you really just have to do some, some goal, you know, goal setting and figure out, okay, here's where I'm at, here's where I'd like to go, and what is the steps you know, necessary. And, and, you know, we've seen with a lot of athletes, those that, that started that transition before they quit playing, end up transitioning a lot easier than those that they're done playing or all of a sudden an injury happens and next thing you know they're out of the game and there's that struggle. Plus there's the um, the struggle, what I've seen, you know, and obviously I didn't play sports to the level that Leonard's played, um, but, you know, you play sports from the time you're a little kid all the way to, you know, into adulthood, and then all of a sudden one day it's over, you know, you got the camaraderie and the team the team goals, the individual goals and, and all the training and everything that's going on and there's always something to plan for, there's always something to do and then all of a sudden one day you wake up and, and it's not there. So that transition from the pro sport to the pro business or pro life uh side of things obviously has to happen, you know, before um those playing days are over, and Leonard's been able to do that. So, so, so obviously, you, you went back to school, Leonard, and what you share a little bit about, you know, what you know, what's happened with you since you quit playing, and I know you've done some quite a few uh, interesting things. Why don't you shed some light on that, and then, and then also share some, uh, you know, what um, what you're doing you know, currently. Well, I think the main thing I did was, you know, while I got my certification at Seton Hall. 
and began teaching that seat and all, I began to go through uh, and understand the plight of the NFL player when they leave the National Football League. And for most guys, they leave professional sports. And talking with other guys from other sports, such as the NBA, Major League Baseball, and uh, the NHL. And all stories went back to the original spot, which was, you know, he who plans to fail tells to uh, he who plans he who fails to plan plans to fail, and uh, and most of these guys you really didn't even set a plan uh, for what they were going to do when they when the cheering stopped or whatever else, and uh, it led me to write my book, my third book, which is entitled "When the Cheering Stops," and to talk about the transition, to talk about players uh, squandering money uh, through the process of dealing with their health issues. When they got our pro football guys that played between 1982 and 1995, didn't really retire with this new executive level uh, retirement plan that the NFL has put in place uh, post-1998, which which pretty much will leave them a, a government millionaire, but will also take care of their health benefits for five years for them and their families. You know, when I retired, you got a year of uh, insurance, you got another 12 months of COBRA. And, uh, and then you pretty much had to go out and find your own plan. And if you didn't find your own plan, you were SOL. Um, and for a lot of people, I think you know what I'm talking about. And uh, you pretty much had to go on your own and try to find yourself a job, find yourself a second career, uh, and open a business where you can establish a group plan for yourself and your family. And or you were pretty much shut out. You know, you were pretty much shut out and trying to find health, health insurance and health benefits. And, for a lot of guys that play in the National Football League, it's tough to get health insurance when you come from this game and your body's been beaten up so bad that insurance companies will not greet you or, or provide you with health insurance because your body's been so beat up. So it's a tough transition for guys when they leave the National Football League uh, without getting the proper support. So from teaching Leonard and researching and then going back and looking at the guys from those years, from 82 to 95, what did you see, particularly the lack of planning involved in that? What, and what, what advice would you offer the player today? Because you do, have, you do make a lot of money, but the problem is, you're right, Leonard, you're uh, basically going to spend a ton, a ton in health care from how your body's beat up after your career. And regardless of now how things are changing, the pre-existing conditions are at least uh, – going to be covered, uh, that does not mean that it's still going to be affordable. And for guys out there that are injured constantly and, 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 and you know, have a lot of health conditions, what do you recommend when they first get out so that they make sure that they don't put themselves in that predicament? Well, I think the first thing they need to do is find something that they like to do or engage in a process of a friend they went to college with that men have a business or might have started a business and then link themselves up with that friend and try to get involved with their businesses somehow or try to find something that they love to do. Um, uh, that's a company that's operating and that shit. They could pretty much align themselves with them and, 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 and take a position with them or find a way to get themselves health benefits because that's the biggest thing you need when you're transitioning to pro football is health insurance benefits. I think the next step after that is, is finding a way to get those benefits where they're covered where you're covered and your family's covered, but for the most part, when you're, where you're covered, because it could cost you an upwards of a million dollars uh, for back, neck, spine, and, uh, and shoulder rehabilitation and surgery uh, immediately when you get out of pro football. And I think that is the best offers the biggest challenge for players. I, I'm I'm amazed to hear this because Leonard, you're the first person that spoke about this in, in this kind of detail that about life after football. We pl- talked to so many athletes, but it's not been reflected as the simplest thing as as, as healthcare, GJ, and and having a plan and making sure that they can use uh, their their career as a stepping stone to a a a, a, fin- a longer career, GJ, where they're safe that that they uh, can take care of their family. So it's very interesting what Leonard's been able to talk about. Right, G? GJ? Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Um, the, yeah, the other thing that I, that I, that, that's also the, that's not addressed there is, is that they go from having an income to no income on top of the, the, uh, the expenses. So, I mean, I, I see how it's, it's very tough to transition. So, 
So what, so what are some of the things that you've been able to – obviously you went back to school, you had a transition plan, and you've turned that into success for you. So what are you pre- pre- presently doing right now? And uh, what would be some advice that you tell our listening audience, you know, who aren't playing pro, but, you know, they're, they're looking to transition, you know, maybe from a job to being an entrepreneur. And what would be some of the things that you'd recommend for them? And, and then what are you pre- presently doing right now for yourself? Well, the first thing that I would do, if I'm transitioning, I'm looking to transition out of pro football, is find, find yourself a strong veteran player, a strong uh, former player who will pretty much retire from the game in, in, a, or in a position that you'd like to see yourself in. And you have to visualize yourself being in that position uh, only if you're able and capable to commit to working as hard as that guy did to make the transition work for him. So um, that's the first thing. The second thing that I would do is uh, make sure you got yourself uh, some strong people or some good people in your life that will support you in your life after professional sports, um, you know, versus those that pat you on the back and um, and uh, tell you you're great while you're playing and take the free drinks and take the free dinners and take the free trips and all those things. And like Bill Parcells would call them, PRWs, who these guys will eat, ride, and walk the seat for the next guy to come along in your life uh, that, uh, that will mean something to you or uh, in a good position. I think the third thing that, that I would do is, is make sure you, you, you're you hooked up with a good, good financial advisor uh, after pro football because you're going to need that guy. You're going to need that guy to, to, to table you from becoming that guy of two years out of football. You're either bankrupt, three years out of football, you're divorced, and five years out of football, you're broke and destitute and don't know what direction to take. Wow, those are that's definitely great advice, and Leonard, I guess touching upon specifically enough the fact of financial advising, the guys that make the big bucks now, uh, uh, especially after you said after a certain year, you know, where the money started getting much better and the at least the health care is a little longer. How do those guys make sure that they invest in the right thing? Because there's tons of people who are going to come out with handouts and say, hey, I got a business idea, and then you could blow that money very quickly. Especially if you think, okay, I'll be an entrepreneur. I have a great idea, and everyone's their yes men around him, around that athlete, and then that athlete invests, and when the money's gone, they leave. Well, I can honestly tell you that today's football player doesn't have to do with some of the guys did back when I played. You know, my first four years of pro football, I kept a summer job or an all season job, summer job, an all season job. You know, I from my rookie year, I worked at the Meadowlands. Uh, in the uh, at the Middlelands Racetrack for two seasons, my my first two years in the league, my third off season in the league, uh, I worked for another company. My fourth off season in the league, uh, I pretty much started making decent money and, and could take the off season uh, for myself and enjoy myself a little bit uh, and 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 train and put a little bit more into my job. And that that was the year we won our our first Super Bowl. Uh, and then thereafter, uh, I continued to make decent money and didn't have to work in the off season. But had I known then what I know now, I would have kept that position in the off season and done some other things. Instead, what I did was I learned business from 1987 on and had people around me that, you know, were showing me different things. You know, one guy showed me the printing business, uh, the commercial printing business in Manhattan. Uh, another guy showed me the garment business in Manhattan. Uh, uh, another guy showed me the factoring business and, and money business, real Wall Street money business. Uh, after I, after I re, uh, you know, decided that I'm going to uh, stay in New York uh, past 1990, and then that set the table for me when I retired. You know, and one of the things I, when I retired I went into was I went into the garment business. I started making NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball products. Uh, and after I sold that business, I went into the mortgage business in New York. And then after uh, that business collapsed in 2008, I sat on the sideline and I started doing the factoring business and and financing uh, companies' receivables and then buying restaurants bad debt and things of that nature, you know, with my uh, my degree in finance. So, you know, I, I did a little bit different things than some other guys did, and, you know, versus, you know, running a nonprofit and trying to live through the nonprofit and make money off the nonprofit, which is, pretty much kind of illegal, but, you know, some guys have done in the past. And, uh, you know, so, I, you know, I did a little bit differently. Um, 
And uh, and now today, you know, I still I work in the finance business. I'm with a company called SFS Funding uh, in New York, um, uh, Strategic Funding Services. You know, we we do uh, uh, all balance sheet financing. We do um, um, asset based lending. We advance money to NFL players, NBA players, and Major League Baseball players uh, against their contracts. Um, guys that need money uh, and can't get their hands on money, we help them and uh, uh, make the transition from the, the postseason into the next season by providing them with uh, financial planning strategies to get them cash now uh, versus them having to wait six, eight, nine months before the season begins again and they have an income again. And they get in trouble because they, they get poor advice and and they don't have good financial planners while they're playing the game, or or they're just overspending. And um, and and those are the guys I look to help and educate. And uh, that's tremendous, Leonard, that you're seeing from your experiences. And I think that uh, GJ always speaks about, and it looks like how Leonard's path. In, in business after football, G.J., is surrounding himself with the right people. And, G.J., you talked about this so much in your book and uh, in your talks that surrounding yourself with the right people, G.J., leads to success because if you surround yourself with the right people, you're on the right road to success. Right, G.? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, Leonard nailed it. You know, one is have a transition plan, so have a plan. You know, surround yourself with the right people and people are going to, you know, tell you the truth versus, like you said, the PR, the PR guys that are cheering you, cheering you on. But when things are tough, they're nowhere to be found. And, and then constantly educate yourself, whether it's in school and like you, like you shared, Leonard, you went and, you know, learned different trades with different experts. And, you know, there's always something to be learned in every industry, you know, from a business standpoint that you can always apply in another business. And, and uh, so you've done that. And, you know, one of the things I was thinking here, you know, you know listening to you is is that a lot of the guys that you played with on, on those giant teams, man, they've all, you know, and, and maybe it's a, te- and a testament to, you know, Parcells that, you know, um, you know, I know uh, Mr. Banks, you know, he, he's done very well. And, you know, one of your former teammates and, you know, a lot of those guys that were on that team, you know, they went off and they, they, uh, they came in at that time where contracts were just starting to go up. And but they didn't have the the big big kind of contracts right out of the gate like they have now, and uh, they learned how to work hard both on the field and off the field, and and uh, a lot of a lot of guys from the, I know those teams have you know took that Super Bowl mindset and, and applied it on you know off the field, and obviously you've done a great job doing that. So why don't you share uh, where we can find more information on you and where we can find more information on getting your books and. And uh, we'd love to have you on our show, uh, you know, in the future as well. Well, you can find my book at uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com. The name of the book or the title of the book is called When the Cheering Stops. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great read. Um, it, it talks about uh, players in transition. And also uh, featured in the book is the tight end, former tight end from the New England Patriots, Ben Coates. Uh, there's a, a, a chapter in the book dedicated to Emerson Wall and, and Dave Durson, two very good friends of mine. Dave, of course, is, uh, is a player I admired a lot, uh, one of my fraternity brothers, uh, and, uh, and someone that I respected the hell out of because he not only, he, before he passed, he had a successful business at McDonald's. He was the number one tool supplier of breakfast meats at McDonald's worldwide. He had a $65 million a year business. Uh, McDonald's, Burger King, Denny's, and Arby from uh, executive MBA from Harvard. Uh, he had a graduate degree from Notre Dame, and uh, you know uh, his story is kind of interesting uh, because uh, the process associated with NFL disability uh, is the same thing that almost took Dave during his life, or at least drove him to commit suicide um, and, and put him in uh, put him in a, in a bad place. Um, you know, so, so that's some good stuff for, for fans to read. And I think people that really want to fully understand what an NFL player goes through on a daily, weekly, annual basis. Um, what I'm doing now, I'm looking for strategic funding and, and a division called Strategic Plus. We do purchase order financing. We do accounts receivable financing. We do asset-based lending. We do equipment leasing. We do healthcare funding. 
we do patient financing. So if a patient had to go into uh, the hospital and didn't have the money to, to pay the hospital for a procedure um, because they didn't, or they didn't have health insurance and they wanted to pay a hospital for a certain process of procedure, whether it be plastic surgery or, or cosmetic surgery, uh, we would finance stuff like that, uh, given that that person, that individual had proper credit to warrant us lending them. So we do a little bit different things uh, than a traditional bank would do, and uh, and we help people, and uh, almost like uh, GE Capital, but at rates a little bit better and more competitive than GE Capital. Well, Leonard, uh, is there? Do you have a website or uh, for yourself at all, or uh, Twitter or Facebook? Or you... I, I, yeah, I do, I do. You can reach you can reach me on Twitter at Leonard at uh, Yolo Seven O at Twitter. You can also reach uh, me at Strategic Funding, fifteen oh one Broadway in uh, in New York, New York. I'm at uh, Suite fifteen fifteen. And the phone number is 212-354-1400. Any NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball player looking for an advance to get this contract in the offseason or looking for an advance of funds because they either have tax issues or financial problems they need to resolve uh, immediately, I'm in position to help them. You can also check us out at www.sfscapital.com. And uh, you can reach me at L. Marshall at sfscapital.com. Well, Leonard, uh, enjoyed the conversation. It was a lot of fun uh, learning about, and I re- you're the first person that's really brought to light specifically what the players go through that are things that a lot of fans would never think about. Health care. Simple things that I would have never thought about. I'd think about, okay, how can they maintain the salary they have or how can they continue to live a, a very... Uh, good life and before I know in your time again that was a little different with financial we've had a lot of players uh, that played when you played on the show that you know they had to definitely have a second business and really look and focus but what about those other athletes out there that just don't know how to recover from these situations so I appreciate you calling the program and best of luck to you and reach out to me anytime Leonard you have anything to promote and we'll have you back on. Oh thank you so much guys I mean no doubt you know, I hope that I enlighten not only you guys, but a lot of players out there are options and opportunities and things that they need to be thinking about that you don't think about. You know, this player now has a different animal to tackle now. This player now, if you sign an NFL contract, and you guys should know this, if you sign an NFL contract today uh, and, and, and go the last couple of years and you retire from pro football, all this big money you see these players getting now, they're signing their life away when it comes to traumatic brain injury, to CTE, to ALS, to dementia, or anything associated with head trauma. You know, they're making you sign your life away. You can't come back into the league and say that they didn't disclose it to you. Thus, and uh, so you better put that money away. You better make sure that, you know, if you're making that six, seven, eight, nine million dollars a year for five, six, seven years, you better put that, you know, 35 to 40 million dollars away. Otherwise, you're going to have some issues when you get out of pro football. All right. Well, we'll definitely uh, – that's another good point to talk about as well. Leonard, best of luck to you, and we'll talk soon, okay? Thank you, fellas. All right. Take care, Leonard. Okay. You're listening to the Simply G Radio Show on the Simply G Media Network, and we'll be back in just a moment. 